There are over 110 elements on the periodic table. How then are atoms of one element different from those of another if they are all made up of electrons, protons, and neutrons? Not long after the Rutherford gold foil experiment, Henry Moseley, an English scientist, discovered that atoms of each element contain a unique positive charge in the nucleus. He identified this as the atomic number, which is the number of protons, and is unique to each element on the periodic table. We can find the atomic number above the, the uh, chemical symbol on the periodic table. Because atoms are neutral, the number of positive protons is equal to the number of negative electrons. In order to practice this concept, I would like you to pause the slideshow and answer these three questions on a separate piece of paper. Let's see how you did. How many protons and electrons are in radon? If we look at the periodic table, radon is number 86, which means it has 86 protons, and because it is a neutral atom, it also has 86 electrons. Magnesium is number 12 on the periodic table, and has 12 protons and 12 electrons. An atom of an element contains 55 electrons, which element is it? Because protons and electrons are equal, this atom also has 55 protons, and number 55 on the periodic table is cesium. An atom of an element contains 14 protons. Which element is it? The 14th element on the periodic table is silicon. Dalton, one of Dalton's postulates was that all atoms are identical for a particular element. We know now, with further research, that this was incorrect. There are atoms that are called ions, which are atoms of an element with a different number of electrons. Remember, electrons carry a one negative charge. So when an atom gains electrons, it becomes more negative. An example would be a fluorine atom. Fluorine atoms typically gain one electron, which gives it a negative one charge, which you can see with the little charge next to the symbol for the element. On the other hand, if an atom loses electrons, it becomes positive. Calcium typically loses two electrons, which gives it a positive two charge. We can also tell atoms apart based on their mass number. The total numbers of protons and neutrons is the mass number, and in this particular representation, it is on the left upper corner next to the element symbol. Below that is typically the atomic number, which we now know is the number of protons. So how can we figure out how many neutrons are in this particular atom? Well, if mass number is protons plus neutrons and the atomic number is protons, if we subtract the two, we can calculate the number of neutrons. Again, I would like you to pause the slideshow and on a separate piece of paper, determine the number of neutrons in the following atoms. To again, to determine the number of neutrons, we subtract the mass number from the atomic number. So neon has 12 neutrons, calcium has 26, oxygen has 9, and iron has 31. All atoms of the same element have the same atomic number. That's what identifies the element. But not all atoms of the same element have the same mass number. So again, Dalton was incorrect that all atoms of an element are identical. We call isotopes atoms with the same number of protons but a different number of neutrons. For example, a potassium atom always has 19 protons and 19 electrons, but it can have either 20, 21, or 22 neutrons. Because isotopes have a different number of neutrons, they also have different mass numbers. So if we look at these three different lithium atoms, they each have three protons, but you can see there's a lithium-6, which has three neutrons, a lithium-7 with four neutrons, and a lithium-8, which contains five neutrons. Isotopes have the same chemical properties because they have identical number of protons and electrons. The only thing that's different is the mass number and the number of neutrons. Most atoms in nature are found as a mixture of isotopes, so there's not just one type of atom for an element. For example, about 69% of the copper atoms found on Earth are copper 63, and the other 31% are copper 65. 
the average atomic mass, which is listed on the periodic table, is an average mass of all of the isotopes that exist for a certain element. So how do scientists calculate the average atomic mass? Again, we have the numbers for copper 63 and copper 65. You take the percent abundance and change it into a decimal form and multiply it by the mass of the isotope for each of the isotopes that exist. You add those components together, which gives us the average atomic mass on the periodic table. So for copper, we take 69.2% and multiply it by 63 and then 30.8% uh, times six copper 65. Adding these two together, we get 63.62. I would like you to pause the slideshow again and calculate the average atomic mass of boron from the periodic table. Again, boron has two naturally occurring isotopes, boron-10, which is 20% abundant in the universe, and boron-11, which is 80% abundant. In order to calculate the atomic mass, we need to change the percentages into decimal form and multiply them by each of the isotope mass numbers. We will then add our results together. So the average atomic mass of boron becomes uh, 0.195 times the mass number of 10, plus 0 0.802 times the mass number of 11. This gives us an average atomic mass of 10.772 atomic mass units.